Okay, so now we just gotta carefully put this piece right here. Well, that video scrapped. <laughs> what else can we do? This is 18 Lego motors, 13 Lego battery boxes, three Lego switches, seven Lego remotes, and 30 linear actuators. And today I'm gonna be upgrading Lego power functions to create a whole new system that works kind of like Minecraft Redstone. And I'm going to start by upgrading a Lego motor. Now the plan here is to take four of each of these motors and combine them with gears and steel axles to actually make super motors that can spin super strong and super fast. Let's start by building up a frame to make this thing work. Grab some gears. We're gonna have this large gear be the drive gear. So the gear ratio will be a little off, so it won't be faster, but it'll be stronger. And we'll just put two of these on here. This, make four of these. I'm hoping this will work, unlike last time. It was like stronger than the gears and the axles, so I'm hoping this time these will actually go around this. First we do this. And then, for these other ones, we just do it the opposite way. Now we can connect the motors to this just to see what it'll look like by adding a couple of these little pins. This one's a very compact design compared to our last one, but now what we want to do is we just want to lock these together so that they don't start moving around. Okay, let's plug this in the battery box. We're gonna take the ones that are across from each other and link them together, and then we just put one here, grab our eye protection. All we gotta do is flip these on. Wow, that is terrible. Actually, is that? I have this little Lego RPM tester that I found on the internet. We are getting 200, about 200 rotations per minute. Now, if we compare that to a regular Lego motor, or faster rotation, wow, yeah, this is like 500 rotations per minute. So basically, we split that in half to make this, but this one is stronger because it has more motors and a gear ratio, which is small to large. I'm not gonna stick my finger in there, I learned that last time, to make this stronger. So now, if we put a gear on the end, let's try four battery boxes, two of these big ones. So we obviously have to lock this together and some stuff, but <sighs> very hard to stop, very difficult. Wow, I think we've done it, guys. We just need to add some simple upgrades to this, which include locking the motors together. Okay, 680, wow. So with these battery boxes, it's 680. I had no idea that the other battery boxes are more powerful. So now we have this. This is a powerful Lego motor. Literally whatever it needs to be motorized, we can power it with this instead of just one of these dinky little motors. In the end of this video, I wanna have a complete system I can hook together like Minecraft Redstone to kinda of have a Lego Redstone system to build whatever with pistons and buttons and switches and all that good stuff. So build one more of these so we'll have it and then we can upgrade some different power functions. All right, so now we've got two super motors. The next thing we're gonna upgrade is Lego switches and that sounds lame but I have a really cool idea. So right here, we have some Lego switches. Each one of these was like $20, but basically it's just a simple switch that goes in between the battery box and the motor, and it just controls which way it goes. So what I wanna do is build an actual lever out of this so we can actually implement it in a bunch of builds we do. But first, let's build a simple lever that kinda looks like the Minecraft one, cause hey, why not? We'll grab our plates. Now we just gotta build this up with bricks and actually make it look like a lever. What I'm doing here is just building a bunch of blocks, which are two plates and one brick high. Now we just need to build a lever that goes on top, but here's the base and here's the switch, as you can see. Very good building. <laughs> Add a little axle like that. It's a lever, guys. It took me like an hour. So now, as you can see, if we take a motor, so we'll have to put the motor in here, which will be a little weird. Turn it on. This goes one way and this goes the other. So now we have a lever. That looks just like the real thing. The next thing I want to upgrade is a piston. So I mentioned to have all these linear actuators. And what these do is basically at the back you have an input for like a motor or a spinning axle. And there's like a big worm drive in here, I'm guessing. You spin that at the end, this thing extends. If we just combine a bunch of them like this, we'll have a central gear and these will go around it. And then we'll have a super strong piston. First, we're going to add a couple of these. This is genius, guys. Trust me. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab these and we're going to put a one by three on this. We're going to stick this right there. So we can do four. We can add a third gear in the middle right here. And when we spin this gear, these will both go the same direction. Notice, like that. Um, obviously that's just two. We can do a little better here. So let's go, bam, bam. Boom, just like that. Now this one drive gear controls all of these and turns them all the same direction, which is great. Now we just gotta link these up to make the other side of the piston. Like this, boom. And now we just connect this to our super motor. And this will go like that. And as you can see, this piston is now extending with the force of so much. And now this is going to rip my hand off if I don't stop it. 
that's what the lever would be for. So we have this basic piston, which we can put into basically anything we build. I'm honestly not gonna take this much further. The whole point of having these like this is that so they can be bigger and just like you put them in place. But if I make it super big, I'm not gonna be able to put it in my inventions. But we're gonna need some more we're gonna need some more components for that first. <laughs> I'm just gonna build up a couple more of these because it was pretty simple to be honest. All right guys, so the next step, the next thing we're gonna build is a button. And I know that sounds really lame, but it's actually going to be very difficult. And I've been prototyping this, I've been trying to figure it out. This is gonna be a really cool thing because we're gonna take a switch <laughs> and convert it into a button. And that sounds very easy, but it's actually quite difficult. Put that there, put that there. It's a little loose, but it's working. Um, now, as you can see, we can push it down and I mean, it could be a little better. Okay, so I'm working on the mechanism for the button. Now I just have simply... <laughs> now I just have simply this button pressing, and so it resets it to normal. So let me just build this up and see if this one will work. Okay, now for the top of this, I'm just gonna add this simple thing like that. Check that out, guys. And then to hold it down, you just push it down. And it just pops up. Okay, so now we have a Lego button. We can integrate this later, but the next thing we're gonna do is build another thing. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I'm gonna upgrade is based on one of my frustrations with Lego. If you wanna take a motor like this, and if you want to, say, turn it on and control the speed, you will need an infrared receiver, a battery box to plug into that, and then you need an actual remote to control the speed, as you can see here. You need all of this to just control the speed of one motor. So since I'm building these super motors, I'm going to combine all of this into one to make a super super motor with a speed controller on it. So now let's combine this all onto this. If we just add a couple of these little stud on top thingies. Now this should snap on here. Perfect. Now those battery boxes are on the back of this. Legos are so clunky. Now we have these two things, which connect to the battery box right here and can probably go that should hold it on pretty tight. Underneath that. Check it out, guys. Here we go. We got everything connected to this. We have the remote. We have the IR receivers down here. We have the battery boxes, which if we turn on, this is a really powerful motor. And as you can see, we've got the speed controller right on top and also a kill switch. If this is full power, all we need to do is hit one button and the whole thing stops. This is the super speed controller motor. I don't know why I keep calling him super, but it just seems kind of fitting because of all the things they can do. So there we have this, on to the next upgrade. All right, for the next ones, we're gonna do a speed round. And we're gonna start that by building a miniature Lego piston using a Lego servo motor. This only moves about 90 degrees at a time, which means we can get the motion we need super quickly. Now this is just going to be a simple piston. I'm gonna use this, connect that to here. Perfect. And then whatever we attach to the end of this will actually become our piston. Now if we just take this and we add... Now this should be pretty strong. We have a functional piston, as you can see. This is upgraded. Okay, so I have some power functions lights, and I've been kind of trying to make something cool. So this idea comes from my friend Christian. It's just like a light changer. So if we take one of these circular things, and then we put a different color circle on each side, and then underneath, we put one of these lights, just like that. Look at the color really is changing. Honestly, there's not much I can do with these lights, so this is just kind of like an ongoing idea. But hey, it's a color switcher. So, there's Lego lights. The next thing we're gonna build are some gear ratios. I'm gonna build a slow gear ratio and a fast gear ratio, and these can go in between the motor and the output. All right, so as you can see here, we have some gear ratios. I try to make them as compact and easy as possible. So this one is made using a worm gear, which means the worm gear can spin. If I put this right here and I turn this on, you can see how slowly this is spinning compared to how fast this axle is spinning. And then we have this one, which is high to low, or low to high. So we got a lot of speed going into this, and then out comes this very slow rotating axle. Or, if we literally just switch the thing around, let's see how fast this actually goes. So now we have gearboxes that can go in between everything, which is perfect because that's exactly what we need. Now you guys might not believe this, but Lego solar is actually a thing. I'm talking like we could add this to our builds and actually have solar powered Lego power. This is a battery box that plugs into this Lego solar panel and it charges and it'll tell you how many joules it has. And then we can basically plug whatever we want into this part and it will directly power it, theoretically. Let's go see if it actually works in the sun. So we'll leave this and just kind of angle it right here. And I'm thinking this should just charge, but Obviously, it's really annoying having these separated. That's why we're upgrading this stuff. All right, guys, I finally got this thing charged to 100 joules, and it's blinking, meaning it is charged, I think. So before we can use this and test it, let's combine it. All right, and now we have the LEGO Solar Energy Port, as you can see. This is upgrading 
because it's together in one thing. I'm starting to lose sights on the term upgrade. All right, check out the Brick Science upgraded power functions. We have the solar energy port, the speed controller motor, the micro piston, the worm gearbox, the infinity gearbox, because we can't get a reading on it, the working button. We have our reinforced super motors. We have our high torque piston actuators, and we have our Minecraft switch, which can be used to turn things on and off. And let's not forget our speed reading gun. This is the upgraded power functions line I'm going to call super power functions. You can see here I've made this gorgeous battery pack, which turns on four batteries at the same time. On the end of this, we can put a piston, and we can connect this with like long axles or whatever we want, right? All we need is for it to work, and you can see here, the piston is extending, and this is working. The whole point of this video is to kind of show you that you don't have to always use just what's given to you. You can upgrade it and make it better, and I think we've done that. And just like Minecraft Redstone, there's a bunch of different combinations you can do. It just depends on what you need. I would honestly call this a success, you guys. Huge thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, check out when I made the world's strongest LEGO L motor. Also, don't forget to check out this video's sponsor, Crazy Kai's Bricklink Store, for your LEGO brick needs. You can check them out by clicking the link in the description, or by clicking this button right here. Thanks for watching. Are you kidding me?